these new people. For they really were people now, like you and me, began to migrate across the rest of the world. At this point in time, our ancestors were hunter-gatherers. They were living a tough life in small family groups, killing wild animals and collecting berries and roots to eat. But grasses hadn't finished with us. Because they'd trigger the greatest revolution in humankind's existence. It's not in Africa, but here in southern Turkey that archaeologists believe they've discovered why that revolution happened. The place is called Gobekli Tepe. For me, this is one of the most exciting sites in modern archaeology. Because here at Gobekli Tepe are some of the oldest buildings in the world. They date to nearly three times the age of the first Egyptian pyramids. And there's a, real, there's a real mystery here. Who built this place? And more importantly, how could they have done it? This astonishing structure is 12,000 years old. It lay buried and undiscovered until 1994. Hello. Hello, Jan. The archaeologist who unearthed it yeah, is Klaus Schmidt. But it's great to be here. Hi, welcome in Enclosure C. Enclosure C. <laughs> what a place. It's spectacular, isn't it? I mean, these are great. Big question is who are they? One thing is very important, never a face is depicted. They are always faceless. I saw you, as you came down, you, showed, you were working on a very sophisticated yeah, one here. Yeah, here this, this looks amazing. This what is, is a masterpiece of craftsmanship. Oh, it's God. one stone, it's one made from oh, one stone. We have a flat relief of a boar, and we have this high relief of a leopard. This is an extremely complex society. Yes, yes, and this is a surprise. We didn't know this, we didn't expect this. Or what we are doing here, we add a chapter in world history a chapter uh, which we didn't know it exists yeah. before. To construct Gobekli Tepe with its 50-ton megaliths would have needed a huge army of well-organized workers. Yet 12,000 years ago was the Stone Age, a time when people were supposed to be hunter-gatherers living in small groups. How did they sustain the numbers essential to build such a vast temple? The answer lies a short distance away. Within sight of Gobekli Tepe are the Karajadag Mountains. Here something happened at this time that would change our world forever. It was all to do with one particular type of grass. It's an ancient type of wheat which grew totally wild, just as it does today. It's called einkorn wheat. 12,000 years ago was a time before farming. The people here would have been desperate for whatever nutrition they could gather. Yet collecting it presented a huge problem. Let me show you why. When the head of the wheat's ripe, then just the, the tiniest of touches, and look what happens. It just scatters everywhere. And that's because the seed is attached to the plant so precariously. Imagine if you were trying to collect enough seed for a meal. I mean, I can 
hardly even see where they are. There's one. Oh, it would drive you mad. Frankly, it's hard to believe anyone would bother. But everything was about to change, triggered by a crucial event. A tiny alteration in the genetic makeup of a wild wheat plant. Just one gene in just one single plant. That mutation has been traced back to here, just 30 kilometers from Gobekli Tepe. If you look closely, you can see the difference between the two types of wheat. In the original wild wheat, a special ridge of cells between the stalk and the seed breaks down as the plant ripens. And this allows the seed to fall away. But in the wheat with the genetic mutation, these cells remain as a solid band. It means the new wheat never lets go of its seeds. Now, under normal circumstances in the wild, that would doom the plant because it just couldn't scatter the seeds. Look, you bang it and nothing happens. But it turns out that for one animal species, this trait is really beneficial. Us. Because the seed remained on the stalk after it had ripened, it meant that not only could the people who lived here collect more grain, they could also begin to farm it. In other words, they could take some of the spare seeds at the end of a season, put it back in the ground, and then harvest the new plants the following year. It was the dawn of domesticated wheat. And this wheat gave us bread. A fabulously concentrated form of energy. It could be carried, it could be divided up, it could be stored. And in turn, bread would lead to something even bigger. In order to build Gobekli Tepe, the Stone Age people turned their back on hunter-gathering. They became the first farmers. 12,000 years ago, they began to sustain themselves with bread. Made from the grass we call wheat. Now they could feed the huge workforce required to construct such a vast and sophisticated temple. The mystery of Gobekli Tepe was solved. People had been hunting gatherers, and now this site marks the end of their time, the end of their period, and the beginning of a new age. So Gobekli Tepe is part of that chain reaction. It's Gobekli, a cultural. The people yeah. being in Gobekli Tepe are the first people having bread, also in That's their villages. Not not only here, but also in their villages. Mostly. That's incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. To think that these were the first people to kind of taste yeah. bread, and yeah, it was sure, sure. And the idea then that it was bread yeah. that was the kind of energy source, essentially the sustenance. Exactly, exactly. It's a turning point in world history. <laughs> 